Good afternoon and welcome back. I hope you've had a good lunch, but I certainly hope it hasn't been that good that you're going to fall asleep on me. Okay, let me start by telling you the title of my short talk today. It's Age is Just a Number. And why do I want to talk to you about this? Because I entirely believe that this is so. That we should not in any way be conditioned by our age. You can be, for example, 30 and feel 20. You can be 30 and feel 40. It doesn't matter. Shakespeare did say once, many years ago, that the world is a stage and that every man and woman merely players. So why we are in the world, why can't we act the age we feel? And now that is the question. To be or not to be your age. <laughs> now within our community, we have a fair amount of uh, people that we know, but in general, we know who's who. We know what they look like, sometimes we even know where they work, but one thing that we tend to also know is how old they are. <laughs> and do you know why that is? Because they've either been to school with you, or they've been to school with your father, or with your sister, or even your next door neighbor. So you have an idea of their age. And is that good? No, it isn't. You know, because when people know your age, they expect you to act it and you don't have to. People, when you get to a certain age, expect you to act that you are retired. Really? No, thank you. Age is mind over matter, and the definition of mind over matter is to be able to control your physical condition by using your mind, and therefore having the ability to keep on going. Now, when I was 52 years old, and after having divorced a 28-year-old marriage, I wanted to get away. I wanted to leave. It was a traumatic moment in my life, and I didn't want to stay here. I wanted to go away. Age didn't bother me, but it bothered other people. They, colleagues and some acquaintances, would turn around and tell me, what, you're going to go away at your age? And the emphasis was on your age. And I tell you, that wasn't much of an encouragement, but nevertheless, they kept on going, and they would say, what if you don't like the people you're working for? What if you don't like the country you're living in? And I would just turn around and say, what if I can fly back? At the time, I had my own business, Galton Associates. Some of you may remember it, a public relations company combined with a model agency. I earned enough to cope and to live on that money. And I had enough money as well to be able to pay for half my children's education at university, because by that time I was divorced. But what I didn't have was enough money to invest on myself, to travel, to take time off and write, things that I wanted to do. So thinking of going abroad meant that I might be able to get away from this at that moment in time and to also make money to enjoy other things. My daughter knew about it, and one day she turned up in the office with an English newspaper up the coast with an advert, and she said, I think this would suit you. And this is what the advert said, very attractive. Looking for a bilingual personal assistant to travel with us and live six months in the Bahamas. How does that get you? <laughs> it certainly got me. I didn't look at the advert anymore. I saw Bahamas. I saw the beach. I saw this beautiful scenery, the palm trees lying, laying down on the beach with all this wonderful music that they have in the Caribbean. I certainly wanted to go for it. And was I going to let my 52-year-old self say no? Not, not that I was determined now to apply for the job. And I did. But there were others who applied for the job too, 16 actually. And you know what? All younger than me. So what were the chances? It depended entirely on my interview. That was the only way I could get them. I needed to bring out my experience, my confidence, 
especially my energy, and above all, I needed them to realize that if I was confident, I could do the job. And after two interviews, I got the job. The downside was that they only gave me two weeks to close down my business, to say farewell to my friends and family, and to pack for six months. You know what it's like for a woman to pack for six months? <laughs> That took quite a while. And my contract stipulated six months in the Bahamas. And I went and I stayed eight years. Now, if your mathematics is good enough, I left when I was 52. When I finished, how old was I? I was 60. And what does one think when you get to 60? Retirement age. And the answer is no way, Jose. The experience in this job was invaluable. I was 60 and I was enjoying my life. I was meeting new people, I was learning new cultures, I was traveling all over the United States at someone else's expense. Now, that's not bad for a supposedly retired person. So this just shows you that it's never too late to do things. And from there, it didn't stop. I left and went to Monaco with the same company. And I stayed until I was 69 years old. And I loved it. The experience again was great. But there was a downside. I had to speak French. Now, my French, I'm not going to say it was atrocious, but nearly, but my French was very basic. I could only remember French that I'd studied at school. Was I going to be able to cope? But if my age hadn't stopped me, this wasn't going to stop me now. So off I went, and with my basic French on the job, I started learning more French, and I managed to cope. And it was no mean feat at 69, I tell you. Well, I'm happy to prove to you that retirement does not stop you from being active. It's just what somebody else stipulates. Uh, in the last decades, we've been told you retire at 60. Then it was 65. And if I'm right, I think it's 67 now. So what does the word retired mean? It means that we should withdraw from an active working life. Excuse me? Someone is going to tell me when I have to stop, when I have to stop working or when I have to do things. No way. And again, I say, Jose. That person that's telling you that could be somebody close to you. And they could be negative. They're worrying about you, but they could also be negative. And also, it could be somebody who's your age. And they look at you and they think that you are a Shaporvo también, but you're not. We're all individuals, and we mustn't let anybody assume how we each feel. Each and every one of us has the ability to age in their minds, because age is mind over matter. We only live one life, so you have to enjoy it, you have to live it. If you're alive, what do you want to be alive for if you're not enjoying every single day and doing new things and challenges and, and reaching different goals? Don't stop yourself. If you're here and you're alive, you have the chance to do all that. You could look back and say, I'm going to do things that I've done in the past because I like them, or I'm not going to do those things because I didn't like them, because that's how you learn. Yes, I do know. I do know that all that glitters is not gold. And at the time that I was in the Bahamas, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was away from my family and away from my friends, away from my hometown. And I needed an operation, and I had it. And I had my treatment between Bahamas and Miami. Fantastic treatment. Fortunately, I was soon up and ready to go again. I was, and I am, a cancer survivor. So I continued to work, because if age didn't stop me, ca cancer was not going to stop me either. And that is when I thought that I needed to give back something to the community. 
and I founded the Bosom Buddies Cancer Trust. I hope many of you have heard of it. It is a charity that caters to boost people's confidence after what is a traumatic illness. For some, it's worse than for others, unfortunately. But it also emphasizes what I'm talking to you tonight about, age. We don't care what age you are, if you're a bosom buddy, if you're a cancer survivor. You have to go out there on the catwalk, because it's what we do. Once a year, we have an annual event where cancer survivors take to the catwalk. They do their hair up, we've got their makeup, wonderful dresses, and off they go. And they love it. And they don't care whether they're 50 or 60 or 70. They do it. And why do they do it? Why do they have that impetus to get out there and do that? Because they have a goal in mind. And that goal is to create awareness and to raise funds for the course and to try together with that little grain of sand to eradicate that illness that attacked us all. So you can do new things at any age. And this is something that I want to emphasize all the time, that who cares about age when you've got to go? What I'm telling you today is my personal experience, but I'm sure that many of you already have done that. Some of you are probably doing it now. And those of you who are younger are bound to do it later. But remember, it is your prerogative. But if you are alive, live. One thing never to forget is age is mind over matter. And if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Thank you very much. <laughs>